How many books have you read in the moment thinking, oh my God, this is the best book I have ever read, only to forget the main points a couple of months later. The problem is the insights you take from a book isn't being connected to past knowledge. It's isolated. In this video, I'm going to show you how I use Obsidian to integrate the knowledge I learned from books into the knowledge I already have. Before we start, I want to make it clear that my process for making books notes changes all the time depending on the book. The key is to find the system that works for you. Having a system is better than no system. Let's get into the video. In order to get my highlights from books into Obsidian, I use a software called Readwise. What Readwise does is it syncs up the highlights that I take on my Kindle app, which is the main place that I take book notes, and it sends them over to Obsidian. And in Obsidian, I actually have a really handy dandy plugin that I use called the Readwise official plugin. I'm going to show you how to install it very quickly. Only thing you have to do is click settings. Then you're going to go to community plugins. If this is the first time you ever use community plugins, you're going to have to turn restricted mode off so that you can actually use it. And then you're going to search, you're going to click browse and you're going to search for Readwise official. And then you're going to click the, I already have it downloaded, but you're going to click the install key that is going to be here and you're going to click enable. And then once it's enabled, you are totally good to go. The only thing you're going to have to do is go over to Readwise itself. If you have account with Readwise and I have an affiliate link in the description that you can use to get one and you're going to have to set up your connection in Obsidian by going to the export over here and then you will have a Obsidian icon down here and you're just going to configure your Obsidian account to be connected with Readwise. And once it is, the highlights that you take from your Kindle books and even articles, tweets, and podcasts will get synced over to Obsidian. So let's go into the book that I'm going to be taking notes from today, which is going to be the Introduction to Tantra. I got really into Buddhism over the past couple of months and kind of had a background from Stoicism, which is how I got so into reading this book in the first place. And as you can see, the highlights show up like this from Readwise. I have the title, the book, the author's full title, and then also it's tagged with a book tag so that I know that is a book. And the cool thing about Readwise is as you can see the the highlights that i have come under headings and the reason they're coming under headings is because while i was creating the highlights in my kindle app i actually used some readwise cs to get them to pop up as headers inside of obsidian uh, you can check out the article i will link in the description on how you can use that cs to make it pop up like this but i find it very helpful to show me how to take notes in my system. So there's broadly three steps that I use when I am taking book notes. First thing I do is I go through the highlights that I took from the book that are annotated by me, and I fill out a book summary template that I have for pretty much every single book that I read. The second thing that I do, and usually it's a little bit of a mix with the first, I will sometimes do a bit of the second in the first step, is I create atomic notes out of the book summary that I have created, and I link those out to other parts of my system. Now what atomic notes are, notes that are so singular in their idea that you can link them to a whole bunch of stuff and they don't lose their inner meaning. They just add to the notes of other things. And then the third step that I do is I create Excalidraw drawings for the notes that I make. And the reason uh, what Excalidraw is, is it is a drawing plugin that lets you create drawings inside of your notes. It's really cool. I'll show you how I use it later. And then finally, I reflect on all the cool little connections I made by looking at the graph view as it connects to my book. So let's get into it. So I'm going to open up another introduction to Tantra. So I have two of them side by side. 
And then I'm going to put in a book summary template right there using the templater plugin. I'll explain that in another video. And then I will have on one side over here the book summary template. And on the other, I will get to read through the highlights. Now, what is this book summary template? So I summarize the book in three main sentences. I give my overall impressions. Did I like it? Did I not like it? Then I talk about who should read it, how the book changed me, if I did anything after reading the book, put anything into action. And even I could put, even put in there future things that I'd like to do after the book, my top three quotes. And then finally I have a main point section, which is where I give the real broad parts of the summary. So let's get into summarizing the book. And before I get into reading the highlights, one thing I will say is when I was reading this book, I had the intention of trying to connect my knowledge on Stoicism, which I've already read a lot of books on. I have a ton of articles in my Obsidian library about Stoicism, and I wanna connect it to Buddhist thought. So I'm going in with the pre-intention of connecting these notes that I'm making on this book to Stoicism, which is going to be awesome to do in Obsidian. Oh, while I'm reading through these highlights, I like to read over an entire section at once and then translate over to my book summary writing of the main points after reading through a good like bit of text and that way i have to actively remember what i just read instead of just passively translating stuff from one thing to the next and i also try and word things in my own words so that uh, it is in my own thinking and therefore, if I see it later on, it'll probably make more sense to me than in the thinking of someone else or the author of the book. So let's read through some of these highlights, see what I can find. Okay, so here's the first thing that I found. Uh, masochism, masochism isn't, isn't the path to virtue. Actually going to make an atomic note out of that. I will turn that into a note later on. I'm going to keep it like that for now. Hmm. So this is one big point that I'm getting from the highlights. We see the world as we see ourselves. Meaning if we are um, angry and sad inside, we will see the as a sad and angry place. So the main difference between Sutra and Tantra, and these are the two main subsections of Buddhist thought. The Tantra, Tantra takes a much, well, well, the Sutra believes that there is a lot of time and uh, needed in order to reach Buddhahood. The Tantra believes that we can reach Buddhahood, which is the state of coming past, ascending past your worldly desires and understanding the emptiness and vastness of the world. The Tantra believes that you can do that much speedier by instead of rejecting your desires, coming to terms with them, understanding that just because desire distorts worldly pleasures because it makes you think that something is going to make you feel better than it actually will like you know you'll go into a, a restaurant and you're like oh the food it's going to solve all of my character problems and oh i'm going to feel so good after this uh, and you might not say that explicitly but you might think it subconsciously it doesn't and it won't solve your character problems so 
Tantra philosophy believes that you can still have these desires, you can still enjoy them without not being able to reach Buddhahood. There's actually a really cool story behind the Tantra that begins with the Buddha himself. So I'm definitely gonna begin my main point section with that. So here's a good atomic note that I can take from the book. Uh, like I said earlier, big point of the book is that desire is distortion in that the desires that we have distort the reality of things to make us think that we'll be better than they are. Like uh, if you have a girl that you're really attracted to and you haven't even talked to her once, but you keep fantasizing about her in your mind and over in time, and this could be a guy as well, you distort this person to such a degree that when you actually do end up talking to them, you realize all of your expectations come crashing down. So in this case, I am definitely gonna make an atomic note out of this, put a new note here, and then I will write down the actual concept of desire being distortion. So for, the, for when I create my atomic notes, I like to have an up tag or an X tag. Uh, what an up tag is, is it is the note that is directly related on top of the atomic note. And the across tag is a note that relates across, but it isn't like a top down thing of that atomic note. So for here, obviously this is definitely a part of Buddhism. So I'm gonna add it to my Buddhism mock. I didn't explain what mocks were earlier, but what a mock is, this is a map of content, which is basically like a summary page of a whole bunch of related atomic notes. Now, if I open up my Buddhism summary page, you're gonna notice it's not actually filled out with anything yet, and that's because I haven't read that much on Buddhism. So I am thinking of, as I read more and more, I'm probably not gonna fill it out right now, but I'm gonna collect a critical mass of atomic notes to gather for the Buddhism mock, and then at some point I will fill it out when I'm ready. Uh, as long as you are spending more time doing than organizing, the better. Now I'm gonna think if there's anything I can relate this to. Ooh, is this, um, ooh. So there's a concept in Stoicism called preferred indifference. And that is the concept that you can prefer to have something without putting your happiness on it. So this definitely relates to that. And I'm going to create a note on it. As you can see, it's not actually created yet, but I know I have information on this in my notes on Stoicism. So at some point it will create it, get created in the future. And then finally, this tag up here represents the state of the atomic note. 
And when I first create an atomic note, it becomes a uh, seedling, which means it hasn't really been filled out whatsoever at all. And then once I have a bit of stuff in it and I'm looking to add on to it to link out to more stuff, it becomes a fern or a sapling kind of. And then once I finally have it completely filled out, it's connected to a lot of things in my system and I feel confident in how it's worded, I can turn it into an evergreen note, which I put a tree on it. But right now I'm gonna keep it here and keep going in the summary. Oh, one last thing, as you can see, this is awesome right here. This is the local graph view. And you can see that this desires distortion note is now connected to three things, which is introduction to Tantra, the book, the preferred indifference uh, concept from Stoicism, and also Buddhism. So you can see I'm creating this little link nature just with this one atomic note, and it's just gonna keep getting cooler. Another atomic note on your mind is the essence of who you are. Here I am connecting an atomic note to a stoicism mock. Okay, so here I took a cool atomic note on a stoic idea that your judgments of events are what hurt you instead of the events themselves. And I explain all about how the stoics thought that we could deal with this realization. But now I'm connecting it back to an atomic note that I made in my summary that I'm writing for the introduction to Tantra, which is that your mind is the essence of who you are because it relates to this idea of judgments and that if it doesn't harm our character, how can it harm us? Because our character is the most important asset that we have. Our mind is the essence of who we are. So it is our mind's judgments of events that hurt us. And one of the cool things I did is I actually linked it with an alias, which basically means that I linked to the atomic note of your mind is the essence of who you are. But then I put a bracket and reworded it in my own words so that it made sense with the sentence structure. And now, as you can see, if I open up the graph view, there's just really cool little connections that are coming here. There's stoicism, and then your mind is the essence of who you are, and your judgments of events hurt you, not the events. And then also the dichotomy of control and if we actually jump into here and we go out to another depth view, now we see, oh, look at all these cool connections. We have, you know, the introduction to Tantra over here and Epictetus and my lifestyle design mock and how to stop overthinking and emotion and social psychology and philosophy mock. 
I thought we were talking about just Tantrayana and Buddhism. That is the power of linking your thinking. This is so cool, guys. Okay, now let me tell you about this because I think this is so cool. So I'm writing a section on the correct view of emptiness, which is the third prerequisite to being able to practice Tantra. And it's all about coming with realizing that there's not a speck of self-existence in anything. The only reason anything is anything is because of our mind. And now I'm connecting this to a note on sensation and perception and the concept that we as humans and any animal actually uh, with sense organs sensory stimuli come into us as objective pure stimuli and our past memory and childhood and all these other things are the culture we grew up in and also our like mood at the moment and the environment around us cause us to perceive those sensations and basically mean that we perceive things completely different to someone that could be right next to us in the exact same moment. And the interesting thing is this note on sensation and perception, it was a lecture note I took on behavioral neuroscience in one of my science classes. So think about that. My Buddhist book that I'm making a summary on is now being connected to behavioral neuroscience, which is connected to a whole bunch of other things like action potentials and myelination and the brain and hormones. And it is just so cool what this linking system can get you. And now my, uh, the correct view of emptiness I was talking about earlier is connected to the flow state because I'm explaining how during 
uh, this shouldn't be too hard for us to come to terms with in the first place. During dreamless sleep, uh, we experience what is essentially death. And during intense experiences of the flow state, our ego also dies. The connections keep coming. Once again, another example of just connecting a whole bunch of stuff in my note. I've connected the hedonic treadmill, which is a psychological phenomenon, connected to mindfulness, meditation, journaling, virtues. Now I'm going to be connecting to the stoic tenant of finding a mentor for your stoic practice, which is essentially someone either dead or alive that you use as a guide for all the actions you do in your life. And it's really relevant to Tantrayana because Tantrayana also advocates for finding an external guru that you feel embodies the way you want to follow the Tantrayana practice and using them as a guide. So now I'm just filling out the last parts of the book summary template, and then I'll have basically the entire book summary fleshed out. Okay, so now that I've filled out the major book summary, I'm going to move on to creating an Excalidra drawing or drawings throughout the book summary where I think it would be cool because it just makes it so much more fun to look back upon and reflect on. Uh, 
Oh, this is a perfect spot during the three. So this is a section where talk about the three prerequisites to Tantrayana, which is renunciation, bodhicitta, and also the understanding of emptiness. And I can totally make a graphic out of that. So let's see, how can I make this really cool? Three pillars. Hmm. Oh, you know what I'll do? I'll go and look up uh, on Flaticon a pillar emoji. Yeah, there we go. Look at that pillar. Okay, so one, two, three. See if I can get them evenly spaced. Perfecto. And then we'll put in a text document. And I'm gonna quickly search up for my brand color. Yeah, so Excaladraw is a really cool Obsidian plugin that lets you create drawings. I highly recommend anyone who's interested in Obsidian note-taking gets it because it makes it so much more personal, the things that you make. Is that how you spell Bodhicitta? We, oh, you know, it's a funny thing for getting rid of renunciation, junk food. And then we could put like an X bar on it. That'll be fantastic. Ah, there's, it's already got an X bar right here. They knew exactly what I wanted to do. How can I show emptiness? <laughs> it might be funny if I just keep it, keep it empty. <laughs> oh, that'd be great. Yeah, I think I'll keep it empty. Uh, and if we exit out of that and we go to the introduction to Tantra, you can see that my our drawing is right here inside of the uh, inside of the document and I can resize it to be the size that I would like. I think that is good. So now we have the three prints prerequisites of Tantra practice right at the beginning and that just makes it so much more nice and visual and you know it, it has all these things in it uh, that's so much nicer, uh, much more personal of a book summary now. Ooh, here's another place that we can create a drawing in. So to represent the inner guru, I think I will search up for meditation. Ah, there's a good one. Okay, that'll be good to exit. So to 
emphasize the differences between internal and external guru. Internal guru is your understanding of yourself that you've developed through meditation and mindfulness and journaling. And external guru is finding a mentor, as I mentioned earlier, that you can use to help with your practice. So this really represents it well because internal guru, you know, you're doing meditation. External guru, go to a Buddhist temple. Find someone. Don't have doesn't have to be a Buddhist temple. You could also find uh, someone that practices Buddhist philosophy but is in your hometown or someone that doesn't even practice Buddhist philosophy and they just practice something that you respect and enjoy. Now we can see that is also embedded in the document. There we go. And I think that that is going to finish the book summary. We have we have a whole book summary template made out, all the main points, and two drawings. I think that's perfect. All right, and I think that's going to do it for creating the book summary. Now, we have two drawings, thoughts in our own words, connections to outside ideas, and I know that I didn't show how to create a mock out of all of this uh, insight, but the reason that I didn't is I don't want to create a mock out of a whole bunch of atomic notes until I reach a mental squeeze point, which is basically when there's so much disorganization that I feel I have to organize in some way, and I don't feel I have enough information on Buddhism or on how it connects to Stoicism yet to create a mock out of it. But when I do, I will simply open up my Stoicism mock and I'll flesh it out much, much more with all these atomic notes that are connected to it, which as I can see, if I click the, if I look at the local graph right view right now, this is at a depth of two, there are quite a few connections. And if I go over to the Introduction to Tantra, book that we just summarized. Let's see what we've made. Let's see what connections we have in our system. So here we have the introduction to Tantra and it is singularly connected to mindfulness, Stoicism and Buddhism, to journaling, to how to think like a Roman emperor, my book summary, to the flow state, to rippling, to all this stuff, hedonic treadmill, that is psychology, to sensation and perception, a lecture on behavioral neuroscience. And then at a depth of two, it's connected to all this other stuff like stoicism and this note that humans aren't machines and ooh, what is this? Uh, we underestimate how social we are compared to others. What? That's a that's a social psychology note that I took in one of my classes. And as you can see, like this graph and these connections are just gonna keep, keep, keep growing as I keep making more book summary, as I keep learning more in my classes and that is the beauty of creating notes in this way in this book note structure be sure to check out my video on how i write lecture notes inside of my classes using conceptual note taking as always i hope you have a fantastic rest of your day bye bye